So I want to just touch on one final um, piece before we, uh, before we wrap up for today, and that's the, uh, the white paper that we've just produced, which is uh, Market Pulse Check, Seven Common Themes in People Analytics. Chris, um, you obviously had part, in, uh, part, part of uh, the process of, of writing this, so can you just give our viewers, our listeners, just maybe a, a minute or two on an overview of it, and then I'd like to ask just Adam and Debbie, just from your perspective, while we're seeing this great increase in, uh, in businesses looking at their people analytics uh, workforce and also, you know, potentially how that links to productivity. So, so I think all of us, um, I know within LACE, believe that data-led decision-making is absolutely fundamental. And actually, you know, we would never bet our house on a, a particular initiative if we didn't know that it was going to be successful. So why would you bet your company without making the, the same kind of um, you know, fundamental data-led um, way of thinking. We went out to um, a range of clients, people that we um, know through our extended network and technology providers in the people and workforce analytics space. And we, um, we interviewed and asked them a range of questions, really not driven by us, but more just to understand what are the key topics, what are the key themes that are of um, significant importance at the moment. Um, and that, that ranged across seven different items. Um, the, the, the different items um, were, I guess, to me, some places already have, you know, significant ways of collecting data of, of you know, different processes, different ways of actually analyzing that data but they don't necessarily have the skills or capability to go the aha or so what. Um, so, so around storytelling or around almost the internal consulting kind of um, side. So there was a, a strong theme around that. Um, I think it's interesting if you look at the, um, the more senior you are in a company, studies have shown the less likely you are to actually look at the data, and the more likely you are to base it around your gut feel. So I think there's a there's a uh, another strong theme about engaging stakeholders, but convincing them of the need um, to be more data literate and to actually use data um, around the um, the different things. We touched on um, the third area in the whole AI space, but I would say the same um, with people analytics, people and workforce analytics um, is really about compliance and ethics. So it's making sure you're using the data for the purpose that it's meant to be. Um, because we've all seen many a time where people have used data to tell actually a story that's very different to what the data is saying. So I think there's a whole um, compliance and ethics um, side. Um, interestingly, um, lots of the group came back around um, actually managing data and getting reporting right. And I think tying in with the sort of technology um, abundance or the, 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 the huge number of tools that we have for technology, I think we're kind of in that place with um, data management and reporting as well, where there's too many, too many reports in an organization. People don't know where to go to find the right information. So I think it's about, there was lots of comments about simplifying and focusing um, just reporting to start off with so that you can then focus around true analytics. Um, as with all things, there was a focus around the technology itself and what's the best te technology to use. Now, I think that truly differs depending on the different organisations and the mix that, 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 um, that people use to, to pull everything together. Um, we touched on, again, um, change adoption or, or change management. Um, when we were talking about um, the, the other topics that we've talked about today, so whether it's you know, introducing a new technology, I think it's very similar in the people analytics space. And part of that is education, you know, improving data literacy, improving storytelling, um, improving the way, and actually just making it part of your culture to, to be, um, be data-led. Yeah. Um, and then last but not least, I think in the more really broad sense, there was lots of discussion about business transformation. So 
it's, it, it's almost looking at what are the fundamental things. So as the challenges of the economy or the challenges of markets changing, you, and you need to actually fundamentally transform your business. So it might be t coming up with totally different services. It might be coming up with totally different business models. It might be coming up with you know, a diff different range of products is really how do you use people and workforce analytics to make sure that you're focusing on the right skills, make sure you're focus focusing on the right initiatives, make sure that you're not making wrong decisions about where people work or what work they do, or any of the fundamental things that actually make up a business. So to me, it was a, a really good range of both the people side, the fundamental things that you need to do, the technology, the way in which you do that. But I think really looking at the cultural and mindset side to, to pull all of that together. So a, a fascinating range of different topics. I think it just confirmed to us how important people and workforce analytics are. Yeah. And so from, from you guys, from your perspective, the clients that we're speaking to, how, and the, maybe some aren't, maybe how advanced are some of them in their journey? Are you seeing most of the clients that we speak to are very advanced to their varying degrees? I, th I, d I do think it's a real, a real mix. I think the, the points that Chris raised and obviously the points in the, in the white paper um, uh, kind of cover off all, all the challenges really or, or all the talking points that are either advancing some organisations or, or, or keeping some organisations uh, behind. I think the key, the key thing I think that differentiates maybe those organisations which are slightly further ahead versus those that, that maybe aren't is that item around 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 storytelling and insight and, and consultative um, behaviour and how you ground those insights as, as well? I think there's there's a very different there's a, quote, there's a very difference in effectiveness in terms of giving somebody data um, and even if you present just that data in a nice way, you're still giving them something somebody data and giving them something which they can make one business decisions from or two prove that the decisions they're making are. Correct. So I think the, the clients that we're seeing that have really strong um, people in workforce analytics are basing that around business outcomes. How are we driving business outcomes, not just from obviously from the fiscal perspective, but those actually those people led items that we were discussing earlier on in the call. How are we how are we using those and how are the initiatives that are playing into those being productive and not being productive and basing stories and, and uh, around that? And then advising on how actually the, to, to improve those, those metrics as, 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 as well. Nice. I think as well we're seeing the requirement on CPOs and people functions generally being uh, much higher profile. That the requirement for data knowledge, data skills, um, uh, maybe I should call it analytic skills, right? Not data skills, but... Um, to be able to use that business information. I, I, I completely agree in terms of there's a real mixed view, but I think we'll see it more and more rise into the fore in terms of what our, what our CPOs asked to do. Um, and I think um, th there's also a, a, a mix because we, we can talk to some organisations about, for example, their employee experience or their EVP, and, and typically we're starting to hear more of what, what's the analytics or the data that supports this in, or, or that demonstrates, to your point, you know, that demonstrates it's a, the right decision. So we don't just say, here's a, here's a great EVP. We talk about how we, how we develop that, how we might implement that, but also how do we measure its effectiveness through data? And that data is not typically sort of just bog standard KPIs. It's much more than that, to your point, around the, the analysis and, and the... The storytelling, I think, is the key point. You know, data switches a lot of people off. Mm, yeah. Stories will switch a lot of people on to the same findings, right? So I think that skill is a key thing that we have to focus on. I think the KPIs point, just finally, is, is a really interesting one. I think, I think you were uh, maybe at the conference recently where the speaker said, you know, there's, uh, attrition data is not keeping any CEO up at night. They're not thinking we're losing loads of our, our people. They're just not worried about that. But actually, there's an underlying reason why those people are leaving or why we're not getting top talent or why that top talent is working out the door. And that is what is keeping CEOs, uh, CPOs, CFOs awake at night. So actually, where we see, you know, we need to be talking about attrition data, that's fine. But what, is, what are those KPIs telling us? What are the underlying issues that are informing that as well? And that's so much more 
with the same data, so much more powerful having that versus just giving somebody a, a number. Absolutely. So, um, listen, we are out of time for today, but uh, Chris, thank you very much. Thank you, Chris. Adam, thank you very much. Thank you. And Debbie, fabulous as always. Thank you very much. Um, if you'd like to get a copy of our white paper, you can do so via our website, uh, lacepartners.co.uk. If you have a look in the insights section, we've got a whole range of different topics. Uh, we mentioned, obviously, we've got our Redefine Workforce uh, Productivity Campaign, which you can um, access if you go to the insights section, there's a little button that says campaign, and you can click on that explains a little bit more about the campaign and then within our insight sections we run events we've got podcasts we've got um, white papers uh, and we've also got uh, podcasts that we do as well so um, thank you very much for your time today um, thank you very much for your time thank today you. and uh, we'll see you next time on our next fireside chat bye bye